so we hold the infinity within us this statement is there a way to reach to it logically mm. or it's a matter of faith i in my mind at least that link is missing so yes i am an atrip uh, chetna so i'm looking for tripti but forever tripti is that a possibility for me that link is missing in my mind the cave contains both human logic and illogic logic is not a means logic is one of those things that you have to investigate in the cave is there logic without the brain so is logic separate from the body we said body is the cave so when you investigate you do not investigate through logic you investigate logic as well logic is not the means logic is the object to be investigated what for does logic exist what do you use logic for isn't all logic a means to get to the get to the truth and is that not the reason why you respect logic because it brings you to a point of at least partial satisfaction so you look at logic and then you say ah so this is the reason why logic appeals to me so much because it gives to me at least a vignette of the total a small glimpse and that's why we value logic so much and when you see why exactly do we value logic then you will say ah if logic is so valuable then how valuable would it be to surpass logic because logic goes only half the distance covering even half the distance feels so satisfying how great would it feel to cover the entire distance are you with me why do we not like illogical people because illogic will not allow you even to get to the fact of things so you don't like them. an illogical person will stay in delusion and ignorance would he not so you don't like him so see what is it that you are actually value you don't like illogic because illogic leads to ignorance so what is it that you really dislike ignorance so what is it that you really like truth you have to see that it is not logic or illogic that you like or dislike it is your innate attraction towards truth and liberation that makes you value logic logic delivers something to you it is the delivery man that's why logic is important now what do you value more the delivery man or the good delivered of course the delivery man is valuable valuable because of what he has delivered otherwise no value is innate in him could logic not deliver to you a synchronous harmonious description 
of this world would you still study logic we want to know we want to understand this urge to understand is what is important to some extent logic satisfies this urge beyond that extent it does not how to go beyond that point don't use logic look at logic beyond that point logic cannot be a tool anymore now logic has to be the tooled one till a point logic is a tool that you use upon the world and then comes a point when logic is no more useful then look at logic itself it's a very nice thing to observe how the mind is eager to make sense of what is going on and how it employs everything at its disposal to know that includes logic that includes imagination that includes superstition memory everything everything that the mind can lay its hands on it immediately uses all its arsenal to know even superstition if you would see is a tool being used by the mind to know it's a bad tool nevertheless you should see why mind nurtures superstitions because superstitions give it an assurance that it knows ha huh? we want to know realization is in other words absolute knowing logic leads to relative knowing it's useful from there on you require something else to reach absolute knowing i said we contain infinities in our heart how is it so difficult to fathom let's use imagination that's one of the tools at our disposal she happens to be a stranger hmm she is hungry it's a simplistic question don't complicate it how much of your food would you share with her So the ratio is one is to one. One is to one. Hmm. She's a friend. How much of food would you share with her? Help me out. Hmm. A little more than half, maybe. So now, now the ratio is two is to one in her favor. Hmm. she is a sister and that too a very hungry sister how much of your food would you share with her hm full. full so now the ratio is infinity is to zero in her favor even a thought experiment brings infinity to you and it was just an imaginary thought experiment all has gone to her and you have left nothing for yourself the ratio now is
something upon zero, which is infinity. We are tremendously capable but not as we are. <laughs> Funny thing is the ego does love that tremendous capacity. The prospect of that tremendous capability is very very appealing to the ego. It wants that tremendous capability, but remaining. remaining as it is. And so there is conflict. You can have that which you cannot imagine. But then you cannot remain the one who imagines so much. If you remain the imagining one, you can at most have what you imagine to have. You see, yesterday we were talking of transformation and change. Hmm? A big part of the entire discussion went into that, right? What is change? Is change about seeing that everything about you is black, so you paint it white? Is change about reacting? to your perceptions about yourself and therefore jumping to the opposite pole? Is change about flipping from one belief to the other, an opposite belief? That's what we usually do in the name of change. So the fellow was a miser. And people would taunt him. You're a miser, you're a miser. Would you die with all your money? You're a miser. Look at your tummy. It's all full of money and it really hurt him. I'm being taunted. So he started giving away generously. Now the same people would come to him and say, you're a man with a big heart. You're a respectable fellow. And you'd feel good. Has anything changed? Why do you quickly say no? Has he not turned from a miser to a magnanimous fellow? You do sense that nothing has really changed, right? Do you sense that? Why has nothing really changed? He's still dependent on 
the perceptions of others. Hmm? Mostly our change is like that. The ego loves to retain its seat and then it weaves and plays the entire game of change around its seat. I'll be seated. I'll continue to be seated where I am. Change can happen all around me. I'm pretty comfortable with that. So that's not change. In fact, such change precludes all change. Such change blocks real change. Real change is when you see that all this is not helping you. So you get up from that seat and walk away. You see that you are occupying the center seat and the entire drama, the whole tamasha is happening around you. Of course, you are pulling all the strings. You are the puppeteer. But none of this show business around you is of any real help to you. And so instead of pulling the, still, pulling the strings even more cleverly, you decide to drop the strings and walk away from that seat. That is what is important. That is what is change. That is what really is all spirituality. Don't play clever games seated where you are. Don't just keep changing the colors of the walls. The house itself needs to be changed. Is that real change a step-by-step -step process? We live in steps. So for us, it is going to be step-by-step. -step. So like, do we know, sir, like we are on the right path or like we are just playing the same game again? You will know. If you are really a well-wisher to yourself, you would know.